everyone, welcome back to the Nintendo Prime Podcast, episode 15. 15. Uh, so a couple notes before we get going here. Uh, we are recording this the day that Fire Emblem Heroes comes out on phones. We are in North America, so of course it hasn't released yet. That's our luck, but it'll right. release at some point today, supposedly. So we will be talking about that on the following episode. So uh, even though this episode's running... The entire week of, like, the first week of the game being out, we'll be talking about it the week after. So, uh, what's nice about that, though, is that we'll have a lot more time to play it before we talk about it, and we'll probably have our re- review of it, one of our, it might be the very first review we're doing at Nintendo Prime. Yeah. Um, it will not be a video review, because I do not currently have the ability to record footage off my phone, um, but we will have a nice written review of screenshots and yada, yada, yada. Um, and we'll both have played it. Hopefully extensively, because it's Fire Emblem, and you've been wanting to play Fire Emblem forever, so this finally gives you an excuse that doesn't cost you any money. There is that. <laughs> so, so you have a perspective of someone who's played Fire Emblem and someone who hasn't, which is should make for an interesting discussion next week. Uh, that might be the only note I have. Oh, also, Yoshi's Woolly World comes out the day after this. Uh, it's a 2D side-scrolling platformer. It originally came out Wii U. They're bringing it to 3DS. They added some Poochie levels, some new character. Um... Obviously, we're not going to be talking about that. We do not have a copy of the game. Didn't get a review copy, and we it hasn't come out yet. Um, Wait, is Poochie like the dog from? It's the dog. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So they, I don't think he's really yeah, new. They, well, yeah. Okay. I I'm not an expert on the history of Yoshi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come okay. on now. Okay. Yeah. See, you know, see, see, proof. He has more Nintendo knowledge with some things than I do. Yeah, uh, I can't remember the Yoshi game. It's but it's they got it's basically like Tetris. I can't remember. Chris oh. is going to kill me for that. <laughs> yeah, um, so we do have some awesome topics this week because uh, Nintendo just got done with their investors meeting, and there's a lot of interesting things to come out of it. But the interesting, most interesting stuff came in the post meeting interviews they did, um, and one of those, in one of those, Tatsumi Kimishima, who is the president and CEO of Nintendo of Japan, which basically means he runs the entire company because Nintendo of Japan is the headquarters all of Nintendo, um, he came out and talked, I don't know if it was an interview, it was kind of uh, advertised as a conversation he had with a uh, Japanese outlet, Nikki, and he basically says that the Nintendo Switch, he as he sees it, the Nintendo Switch could sell as well as the Wii did. Now, let's put this in context, because I don't know if you understand how, how much you know about the sales of Nintendo systems. Probably not a lot. I know we kind of talked about it in the past, but I don't remember anything off the top of my head. Well, let's let me just draw this up, and I'll, I'll put a diagram up on the video version of the podcast too. Um, so the Wii was kind of like an anomaly. Uh, uh, so I guess we'll just go by list of best-selling consoles. So the, the Wii was an anomaly. It is the best-selling home console they've ever released, not the best-selling system they've ever released. Mm-hmm. That would be Nintendo DS, which sold like 154. It says right, here. right. Uh, and getting obviously the Game Boy, such Game Boy Color, had hit 118. But for home consoles, the Wii sold 100 and what 101, maybe 102 mm, two, by now. Roughly. Uh, but you know, you kind of go down this list here, and you know, the next best was the NES, was the very first home console they released yep. at 61.91. And then after that, it was the Super Nintendo at 49, you know, a pretty decent chunk lower than the yeah. NES. N64 at 32, mm-hmm. pretty decent chunk lower than the Super Nintendo, uh, and the GameCube weighed on here at 21.74, and the Wii U is somewhere just under the GameCube, right there, at yeah, 13. Yeah, it, it's not good. Yeah, like uh, everything below no. the game, it, everything below the Wii U basically. Is yeah, I was not gonna say that's kind of an anomaly, but where it kind of systems start out strong, then kind of just drops off. The next system that comes out, and then all of a sudden the Wii's like, yeah, Wii! yeah. It's basically the <laughs> NES is really popular, and then every console they've released except Wii has sold less and less, yep. including the Wii U. So like, you eliminate Wii from the equation, Wii U almost looks like the natural fall off from yep. uh, GameCube. Yep. So uh, there's been this trend of the sales going down, and then Wii spike, and then down again. And and by down again, you mean way down. <laughs> yes. So like, for him to be to say. We think, or he thinks, the Switch could sell as well as the Wii. That's crazy. They've only ever done it once. Yeah. They they couldn't even get the NES to sell that well. So like, mm-hmm. 
as excited as I am for the Switch, and as awesome as it is that they have sold through apparently their initial two million that they're going to make, they're ramping up production to make mm-hmm. more um, to try to meet demand, and they're doing you know what we're going to talk later, but they got the first ever ad going on in the Super Bowl, and it's specifically for the Switch. Mm-hmm. Um, it's nice that you know, it, and apparently their Nintendo of America's uh, PR marketing head that came out and said. It wasn't Reggie. It's, it's somebody else. Can't remember his name off the top of my head now. Mm-hmm. Uh, that they have like a fifteen month plan right now for advertising the Switch. Um, so whatever, it's going to get a huge marketing campaign. But like Wii numbers, like why do you why why do you think the Wii was successful, where the other Nintendo systems were not as successful? I think it's because it's something different. The the whole motion controls. It, it felt some of the games that they came out with it felt natural to have these motion controls and it again it was just something that was totally different and I think it it hit a niche that wasn't filled before and did it really well I don't know if I can call 101 million a niche well that's, one of, that's like the I mean? number two best selling home console of all time PlayStation yeah, yeah. 2 is number yeah, yeah. one um I to me, you know, because there's a lot of factors, I think, that led to the Wii's success. Um, and one of them was that uh, really since the PlayStation 2 era, when they added twin sticks to the controllers, um, you could argue that for a lot of adults and a lot of people, controllers got too complicated. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you, to us, it's whatever. We grew up with gaming. Yeah. It just felt nat- like a natural evolution. You had one stick on the N64. GameCube had two sticks, PlayStation 2 had two sticks, Xbox had two sticks. Like yep. it, it felt like a natural evolution of what we experienced, but it wasn't very inviting for new players. Right. Because they've never held anything like this before and they're like, uh, this is just too confusing. How do you move and aim with, with two different sticks? How you know, strafing and like, that's just shooting games, but in general, uh, controls got really complicated. And Nintendo with the GameCube tried doing basically a controller like everyone else had. And they actually, the GameCube was a relatively powerful system. It wasn't as powerful as the Xbox, but it was just below the Xbox and ahead of the PlayStation 2. So, like, GameCube was the last time Nintendo Nintendo was even competitive power-wise, like, with parity yeah. with other consoles, too. And, and there's a whole bunch of reasons why the GameCube wasn't as successful. And I don't think it had anything to do with the power. So it's really weird that Nintendo decided not to use power. But with the Wii, I think Nintendo's thought process was, we need to simplify controls again. And make it make sense. Mm -hmm. And the motion controls, the idea, and this is what Wii Sports really hit on, is that instead of feeling like a controller, it should just feel like an extension of your body. Right. So Wii Sports, it feels like you're bowling. It feels like you're swinging a bat. It feels like you're playing tennis. And that's great. Obviously, it wasn't perfect, but at the time, no people hadn't experienced this before. Right. So it felt like an evolution in a way uh, to get people back into gaming or get them into gaming for their first time. Because it made sense, and it was simple. And when you had to use buttons, there was only two buttons over here and a D-pad. Mm, right. There was a trigger, which made sense. Your finger naturally fall there. And a trigger and a joystick as an optional add-on. So it was um, very simplistic compared to what other companies were doing. And it seemed to be able to do everything the other companies could do, just in a different way. Like, it didn't feel like games were held back because of it. In fact, that at one point, uh, after the Wii U came out... They had to separate out people who used Wiimotes and nunchucks from people who were playing with the gamepad in Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. Because uh, basically everyone who was using Wiimotes and nunchucks was dominating anyone who used the gamepad. Because it was far more accurate than, you know, lo and behold, pointing and shooting, just like using your mouse and the keyboard, is a hell of a lot more accurate than using twin sticks. Yeah. Um, sorry for any console purists that want to argue otherwise, <laughs> yeah. but it's it's like a known fact that it might yeah. seem weird to you at first, but if you do it enough, it is far more accurate than uh, than the twin stick controls. Um, and that, that's one reason that even in Splatoon, that like some people like the gyro controls yep. over the gyro aiming over the stick aiming, because again, it's more accurate if you just yep. get used to it. It, yep. it feels weird, but it's better. Um, yep. So the Wii kind of built upon in my mind this idea that gaming was getting too complicated and it needed to be simplified so it brought in a whole new generation i think of adults and kids uh, into gaming that probably wouldn't have gotten into otherwise this was also bef- like a year before smart devices became a thing and mm-hmm. probably two or three years before smart devices became popular right um 
So it hit at a time when there, there wasn't a whole bunch of tablets on the market and there wasn't a whole bunch of uh, touchscreen phones. And so kids weren't right. engaging with games really outside of video game consoles. Right. Um, so it kind of hit at a time uh, where the market needed to be reminded that gaming doesn't have to be complicated. Mm-hmm. Um, and then obviously the specs of it is how they were able to keep the price down to 250 at launch. And that helped get its mass market appeal. Which 250, 200 to 250 is what Nintendo has always launched their consoles at. Always, except for the Wii U. Wii U was the exception. It launched it at 300 and 350. Um, and now the Switch is launching at 300. Right. So, uh, and, and relatively, like, thinking, oh man, the N64 launched at like $200. Yeah. Granted, yeah. $200 back then is like 500 today, but. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, you know, it was still a ton of money back then. Yeah. Uh, like, just imagining that, that that system cost what the Xbox One cost this generation when it launched, and people thought that was too expensive. Right. But back then, $200. Everyone wasn't willing to accept that price. Yeah. Um, anyways, so the Wii had the Wii Sports, which was a huge reason for its success. Yep. Um, it had Twilight Princess, obviously, at launch, which helped bring some of the core Nintendo fans over. They right. They weren't going to buy the game for Wii Sports or Red Steel or anything else that came out at the time. Yep. And then uh, it provided a way to play that looked fun, looked entertaining, was easy to understand. So it created a fad. Mm-hmm. The Wii was a fad console. Um, and fa- fads get really, really, really popular, yep. and they sink just as fast as they get popular. Yep. So like the Wii basically sold most of its 100 million consoles in the first three years. Yep. So it went 2006, the end of 2006, through the end of 2009. And then in 2010, that's when the sales just kind of narrow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and that's about the time that I think the Wii U should have came out, and it should have been the Wii U. It should have just been no gamepad, and it should have just been the Wii in HD, just upgraded to 360 yep. capabilities, keep the same controllers, you know, with a Wii Motion Plus, and just have all your games be in HD. I think that would have been a I, like what they did with the Wii U. I think was a, obviously a mistake. Um, but if they would have did Wii HD in 2010, right as the momentum was starting to come down, they mm-hmm. could have really built up momentum. Like, hey, now you have all the HD TVs, and well, now you got to get the new Wii. Yeah. So you can play all your yep. Wii games in HD. Right. Um, and obviously they would have had to release patches, and blah, 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 but they could have made it happen. I think it would have been a smart move. But that's not what they did. So the Wii was, was a fad. It was a three year fad. Kind of faded out, petered out, ended up topping 100 million. Um, you know, by far and away a massive success, tons of games. Um, I know a lot of people look back look back on that Wii era, like hardcore Nintendo fans, like, oh man, the Wii era sucks, it's changed Nintendo forever. Yeah, maybe it has. Yeah. But, you know, and that's one reason they're upset about Switch. Oh, Switch wouldn't have motion controls if it wasn't for the Wii. Yeah, but this, like, why are motion controls bad? Yeah, right, exactly. Like, I have not yet heard one legit reason because someone would be like, well, motion controls are bad. Mm-hmm. Why? Because you'd rather use two sticks? Well, good thing the Switch has that. So it's like, right. you don't have to use motion controls. But... Right. Um, even in ARMS, everyone freaking out, they already confirmed you don't have to use motion controls in ARMS. Yeah. I'm probably going to use motion controls because right. I think it's going to be more fun. Right. But if it turns out that it controls better with the, with the standard controls, then I will. Uh, yeah. So for him to come out and say the Switch is going to sell as much as the Wii, to me means that it's kind of a positive and a negative. Because to sell as much as the Wii, it would have to be another fad. Mm-hmm. Which means a meteoric rise for a few years and then it just tanks. Um, which I assume they have a, a better plan in place to maintain momentum, like so having the Switch 2 come out, you yep. know, or something. Right. Uh, but, so that's, that's, that's on the positive end, I guess, that it's a fad that gets really, really, really popular and it sells like crazy. The negative of that is that it'll just sink just as fast and the Switch will go by the wayside and then right. we're stuck wondering yeah. what's, what's next what's again next? 10 years from now. Yeah. Um, and so... I don't want to say that I don't want the Switch to be as successful as the Wii. Heck, I would love if it outsold the PlayStation 2. Yeah. Uh, heck, you know, uh, yeah, PlayStation 2, what, 155 plus million? Yeah. I would love if it topped that. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. But I think that there's two things that are going to work against it. Because is, this isn't a topic that we have this week, so I'm just going to bring it up now. Uh, that Tatsumi Kimishima and E.J. Anuo have both stated in separate interviews now that they are not ruling out that the 3DS might have a successor. So okay. that the Switch isn't the home console and the handle. It's just a home console you take on the go, and we are going to have a 3DS successor. Okay. Um, they're not saying that's going to happen, but it's something they're considering. Mm-hmm. Uh, because they think they could serve two different markets, apparently. 
Um, I don't know what market you could serve with another handheld that the Switch can't do. Uh, outside of making, like, more affordable, I guess. Yeah. I mean, maybe battery life. I don't know. But the battery life of the Switch is actually on par with the new 3DS XL. Is it? Yeah. Okay. So it's like, I know a lot of people complain about the Switch battery. Like, it's actually on par with something they already have out there yeah. that everyone else, yeah. no one's complaining about the battery life in the 3DS XL. Right. Right. So now you're going to complain about the battery life of a home console level well, especially system. Especially that's can, playing a lot more like, powerful Yeah, Breath games. of the Wild. Oh, man. I, you get three hours out of that. Intensive game. Yeah, yeah, well, I could only get three hours out of Hyrule Warriors on the new 3DS yeah. XL. So, like, uh, I'm, that, to me, it's acceptable. Uh, but, so, there's a couple factors here that, one, I think if they do release a successor to the 3DS, it's going to really hurt switch sales yep so i think a lot of switch sales um because of its portability factor and because of its home console factor is some of it's based on the fact that they assume even though nintendo's never stated it that all their handheld games are going to be coming to switch yeah so even if they release a 3ds successor all the games that come on to that successor will also be on switch and yeah. they haven't said that right um we know there are some games that go across systems uh fire emblem warriors is apparently going to be on 3ds as well as switch mm -hmm. okay uh but you know, Yoshi's Woolly World was on 3DS and Wii U. Smash Bros. was on, on, yeah. on 3DS and Wii U. So, like, it's not unheard of to do this, but that's not every game. Like, there is a new game, a new exclusive Fire Emblem game coming to Switch. There's a new exclusive Fire Emblem game coming to 3DS. Mm -hmm. But beyond that, you know, people, I think, buy the Switch assuming next Pokemon game is coming to it. Well, now if you're telling me it's going to be a 3DS successor, that just gives the Pokemon yep. company a reason to not support a home console right. level system. Yep. Um, and that sucks. You don't want that to be a thing yeah uh so i think if a 3ds successor comes out it is gonna hurt switch sales um especially in japan where they love portable and they had huge lines for the switch and if they find out oh we're not gonna get our portable games mm -hmm. we're not getting our monster hunter on here we're not getting our pokemon on here we're not getting our yokai watch it's all going to the 3ds and 3ds successor they're gonna just drop off a planet and not buy the, the yeah. system anymore um, so that's one thing I think it could hurt the sales. And two, I, d I almost don't want it to be that successful as a fad because I don't want it to be a fad. Because right. fads fade. Right. Jinko jeans. Nice fad. Yeah. Right there, you know. Bell bottoms. Wow. Fad. Yeah, there you go. You know, like, you like think of all the clothing fads out there, the music fads, you know, the the, the day of the Backstreet Boys, NSYNC, Britney Spears, pop stars. Like, that that era's gone now. Now, pop is, now popular music is more like hip hop and stuff. Um, and yeah, that, that kind of music still exists. Don't get me wrong. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you, every now and then you'll get one of one you know, some group out there, or some individual that got a song really high up on the list that is traditional '90s pop, but they don't dominate anymore. It's a fad. So like, I don't want this to be a fad. <laughs> I, can't wait I want for this, this fad to be music. almost like the thing is, is like Nintendo doesn't have anything in their history that tells me what I want it to be. Because I, I was gonna say I want this to be like the NES. So it's fifty to sixty million units is successful, not as successful as we was successful enough to get a Switch 2, a Switch 3, Switch 4, before they change things up again. And the problem with that is each one of those versions sold less and less. And I don't want yeah. that to be right. a trend again. Right. Uh, so I don't know what they have to do to make it be consistently successful. We obviously have no idea where technology is going to be a decade from now. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, I think he probably shouldn't have said this. Yeah, I think it gives off the wrong impression that they've been given off with the Switch this whole time. The Switch is a serious system, like not just the 3DS thing. The Switch is this system that's for adults that are have busy lives. That's basically what. The ad, I mean, you know, we're gonna talk about the Super Bowl ad later, but you know, it clearly yeah. shows adults with busy lives. Like, yep. like they keep pushing that forward. Like, yeah, it's got motion controls and all that stuff, but adults with busy lives, and the Wii wasn't really for a system for adults with busy lives. It was for people who had time to play games at home yep, in the living room with their family uh which hopefully that still happens for some people but reality is like now my kids are getting older they're in sports all the time like oh we're on the go all the time so yep. like yeah th that's why the switch makes sense for my lifestyle oh yeah so i i think it's nice to have an internal goal to try to reach Wii sales. I think every company would like to know their system's going to sell 100 million units. Great. Uh, the PlayStation 4 sales are slowing down a little bit, so now that might not even hit 100 million. Um, but I don't know. Like, d does it need to sell as much as the Wii to be a success to you? No. I don't know what numbers, but... Well, right they said the, game, the GameCube was a failure, <clears throat> according to them, and that okay. sold like 22 million. Right. 
Um, and that's what led to the Wii. The Wii U was obviously a bigger failure. Right. And that led to the which, Switch. Yeah. Which Hopefully. I know is weird because like it doesn't feel like it's big of a transition because a lot of people say the Switch is what the Wii U should have been. No one's saying that the Wii is what the GameCube should have been. Right. Yeah, Because exactly. the Wii is yeah. radically different from the GameCube. Right. So, <clears throat> um, and the Switch doesn't feel radically different from the Wii U. It just feels like it's better presented and packaged. Yeah. I, I think with all the hype that I'm hearing, I... Even if it is a fad, I really do think that this is going to be... A good fad? A, a, a good fad, yeah. I think it's going to do well for Nintendo. What I think is nice, if for some reason this is a fad, <clears throat> is that the primary reason it will be a fad is because you could do your your gaming at home and your gaming on the go. And the primary reason you're gonna, well, primary way you're going to control that is going to be with traditional controls. So, like, even if it's a fad, it's a fad that supports gaming as we know it today. Yeah. It just brings it to more people. Right. Um, so, I think it's crazy he said it's going to sell as much as the Wii publicly, or that he thinks it's going to. Uh, it's fine to have that as an internal goal. Like, I, I'm sure internally they want Zelda to sell over 10 million. Oh, they, yeah. They've never had a Zelda game sell 10 million on a single console ever. So, I think they would love to see 10 million on the Switch. Which, yeah. obviously, they're not going to be able to see that until some point next year. Unless it sells like 20 million units this year, which I doubt. Yeah. So, you know, if it sells 10 million this year, well, then we're not going to know final Zelda numbers if it hit 10 million until next year for Switch. But, uh, plus, I think there's an awesome opportunity to have a Zelda bundle and a 1 2 Switch bundle this holiday. Really? Oh. Well, you got to think about it. It's launching now oh, yeah. at 299 with no with no game packed mm-hmm. in. By then, the price of components might have come down enough that they can justify packing in a game that might not have as much sales momentum anymore. One, two, Switch makes a lot of sense for the yeah. first holiday. Yep. Um, but I would also love to see them be like, hey, there's people who are waiting for Mario. They can buy the Zelda bundle Yeah. and get Mario. You know, yeah. buy Mario separate. So <coughs> they're not packaging Mario. Yeah. So I have the same reason, yeah, no, the no, same no, reason no, why they're sure. not packaging Zelda in now. There's too much money to be made. Oh, yeah. Um, as awesome as it would sell the system. It's selling the system anyway. Yeah, right. <laughs> so yeah, like, great, great, it doesn't great, need great, to be yeah. Zelda doesn't need to be packed in. Uh, One Two Switch feels like a game that needed to be packed in because I don't know how many people besides maybe myself are gonna buy it. Yeah, I, I don't know. Um, it, but well, hopefully I don't have to buy it. But I, Nintendo, I keep saying I'm gonna say it every podcast until I get it. I want my <laughs> Switch and I want my free review copies. Pander to me, I am a whore. All right. 